iOS 9.3 Beta 1. And now we can talk about it, right? Because we should just reiterate this, that Apple's changed their non-disclosure policy. Well, they've, they've become, like, they're actually, they're talking about it themselves. They want you nice to know. Change. Yeah, and they have a preview up and they have a website up that has wow. a lot of features listed. And it's it's really cool. Uh, why that's, that's, is that? that no, it's an actual, like, product information page. Why are they doing that? Uh, I think it's just part of, I, I hate to call it new Apple because Apple has always done different things. But it, it they have features that they're excited about and they want you to know that they're coming. Right. And, you know, sometimes they want to do surprise and delight and they want to shock you with things you never expected. But they they have to put this out for developers anyway and trying to make sure that nothing leaks out. And it's just it's annoying just for up. everybody. Good. This is getting out in front of it. And the thing is, this is not a product they sell. So I can understand why secrecy is important on products they sell. But this is really uh, something that's coming to an iOS device near you soon. Yes. So why not <laughs> let people know a little bit? When will we get 9.3? This is beta 1. That means we're still pretty early, right? They haven't said. There's typically around six betas, give or take, for any oh. uh, for any release. And there's usually about two weeks in between them. So late February, early March. Oh. Maybe around the March event would make sense. Interesting. Interesting. So really, again, another piece of evidence that they are going to have a March event. What tell us about 9.3? What's new in 9.3? So there's a few things. One is night shift, and this is sort of people who are familiar with uh, f dot lux flux on right. uh, jailbreak. It, it sort of changes the colors. Uh, Georgia has spoken really well about this before, but technology, especially the screens, has an adverse effect on you when you're trying to go to sleep at night. The colors that they shift towards are ones that promote you staying awake, which is the opposite of what you want. So with this iOS, will will intelligently modify the spectrum that it's providing uh, at nighttime to sort of put you in a state that's less um, agitated it's that's actually kind of brilliant it's less blue in other words yeah it's not a night theme some people thought it was going to be a complete yeah. night theme and right. you know they probably are working on that but this for now is a night shift it shifts uh, towards I, the warmer end of the spectrum from blue yes. to yellow and you know if you're a photographer you know that blue is daylight is bright light and uh, yellow is uh, more evening light and that and makes sense that your body well, is tuned to that light and prepared to wake up when it sees blue and go to sleep when it sees the yellow if they if they if they perfect this and really have it so that you get really tired when you're looking at it, ah. I think it's going to be a perfect tool for ah. a parent. Of hey kids, yes. let's let's have iPad time. It's eight o'clock, you know, and uh, that'd be awesome. This could it's be part huge. Of, it's part of a it's part of a plan where the iPad gets you. You're getting sleepy. You're getting sleepy. <laughs> yeah. Reorder the new iPad Pro two. You, you just you just have dinner with a little tryptophan. You know, so you, you know some milk, some turkey, and then you and then you hand them the iPad and. And you, there's no argument. They're just they just fall asleep, just slumped over the iPad, and then you just carry them to bed. Perfect. The next one is a little more confusing to me. It's 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 basically you can set a password or use Touch ID for your notes, uh, and this is really cool. And it shows some of the advances that Apple's made with their architecture for things like password protecting and uh, and biometric protection. But they're only doing it for notes. So if you type a note, you can then go into options and make that note a secure note that you'd have to retype your default notes password, which is separate from your device password, or use Touch ID to gain entrance to it. So you can put things like financial information, health information, website logins. If you want to keep those in notes, that's fine. Sort of like Apple's version of the one password notes field uh, or, or, or one pass um, loads, uh, sorry, last pass notes field. But to me, like a system wide version, this would be great because maybe you want to protect your messages or your photographs uh, or any of the other apps that you have on your device. So I'm hopeful that this is a first step towards you being able to flip a switch and making any app uh, or any set any data set protected by your passcode or your touch id yeah sometimes like someone might just want your phone because they're locked out of their house and you want to give it to them or, or or someone's kids might be anxious at a, at a doctor's office and you want to lend them your ipad to use and if you have some sort of guest aware mode for this then it'd make it you know much safer for everybody or this could be a beginning of a good password protector for uh, a password vault for Apple. I yeah, mean, Apple's got a really good password system with iCloud Keychain, but there's no way to secure it. So if you right. give someone your phone, they have access to all your logins and all your credit cards and being able to intermediate that with Touch ID. And, you know, like in a perfect Steve Gibson world, if you could have Touch ID and a password, so it's multi-factor, right. uh, it would be a nice addition. Oh, nice. Uh, uh, are we seeing uh, are we seeing true multi-user? Because the only stuff that I really saw was the education options. No, so um, yeah. The other so, stuff I mean, is obviously the infrastructure is going to be there, whether they unlock it for regular users or not. 
Right. Yeah. So they built out a lot of stuff that could be useful for multi-user in general, but the way it's set up right now is specifically for schools and using de uh, mobile device management, the same thing that you'd use to manage devices in, in enterprise or in any sort of large uh, organization like schools or, or government. Uh, and they're doing that in two ways. They're creating a new form of Apple ID. And it's really smart because they understand that kids in kindergarten and grade one don't have the same concept of a password that people in grade 12 might have. So for kids, they have a sort of a combined token that it's four digits and they can put that in and it logs them in and unlocks the device at the same time. So sort of abstracts away both the Apple ID and the passcode for the device. Uh, and then the kid can choose their settings. And this is the part that I love about Apple over the last year is they're going all in on something which is like typically called Nearline. So because uh, any kid could pick up this iPad and use it, what they do is they presume that they, the kid's going to use the same iPad over and over again. So they keep their data uh, local and they keep it highly available. But if another kid picks it up, it'll still store all the data until it starts running out of space. Then it'll push that data back up to the cloud. So, you know, if 30 days from now, some other kid comes and picks it up, it might have to download a bunch of stuff for that child. But they try to be really respectful of networks and of the data. So if you think about how iCloud Photo Library or how on-demand resources work, this is similar but for... Um, multi-user systems, specifically multi-user systems for the classroom. And yeah, it'd, it'd be super nice to have multi-user in general for iOS, but this one seems really, really architected for being run in a managed uh, school environment. Yeah, there's, a, there's another aspect to that that makes it a really good deal for everybody. Uh, uh, Google has been having tremendous success selling Chromebooks uh, for classrooms because, you know, everyone's standardized on uh, Google apps and they're so inexpensive, but they're also getting some flack from school systems because uh, there, the students will use a special Google ID that doesn't track them as aggressively as a regular Google ID will, but it still gives Google the ability to at least create a skeleton profile of them. Uh, and so if you don't want your kids to have an advertising profile anywhere, uh, you might be out of luck depending on how these systems are configured. So it's really good for Apple to detach the student use of an iPad from an Apple ID uh, because if they start using that Apple ID outside of the classroom for personal stuff, that would give theoretically uh, Apple or a company like Apple, excuse me, a company that does something like that, that would give them the ability to really see what they're doing inside the classroom and outside the classroom. That's certainly not something that would be consistent with what Apple uh, presents itself to be as one that really cares about security and privacy. Yeah, and they're really good about it. There's also laws in many areas about what exactly. age people can have accounts. And my my godkids got Google accounts at their school, and they got home, and immediately they logged in, and the first thing they did was a game where you use Pac-Man to eat all the houses on your street. But at the same time, their parents are going, okay, now this this thing knows where we live because you just gave them a street. <laughs> uh, and that's not what every – even if you think it's completely mundane, it's just – it's not an experience that we're used to. And this really is for a classroom setting, and it's super respectful for privacy and for account handling and all those kinds of things. Kids can't be expected to have the same knowledge and the same awareness that an adult. Yeah. Uh, adult adults have a certain obligation to understand the the agreement that they're entering into, but you have to protect kids. They say the news you want even more personalized. Actually, Apple got in a, in a little, I think, a little bit of heat from uh, news publishers admitting that they'd been screwing up the estimates that they've been sending the publishers as to the number of people reading their articles in news. Like when Steve Jobs said the bars were wrong. We were reporting the bars wrong <laughs> on the phone. <laughs> uh, but uh, now uh, more news personalization. Uh, is news succeeding? Is it taking It's off? weird, Leo. Like the news is one of those things where it was like a secret project at Apple and very few people knew what, what it was. And that's great because you can surprise people with this news thing. But I look at my iPhone and in the Siri suggestions page, there's a bunch of news that has no relation to the news app. I go to Safari and the, it's pulling links from my social feed uh, and it's 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 sharing things that, you know, like I follow Andy. So it's any link Andy shares is in there. And there's also things that I've used the bookmarking feature, the read later feature, but none of these are connected to news. So I go into news and I don't see things you guys have recommended. Right. I don't see things that I've bookmarked. I go to the, the Siri minus one page. I don't see anything from my For You and News, and it's really a disconnected experience. This is adding a layer of personalization, and they're going to be doing editorial picks, and they're going to be doing uh, trends. So it gives you a better sort of a slice of what it thinks might be interesting to you, but it's still sort of sitting in this news jail, and it's not being allowed to propagate through the operating system. And one of my biggest wishes for this, for News for iOS 10, is that they'll sort of break down those walls and let news be a core level feature. Like, photos and like so many other things are yeah 
I you, think that one of the things that I've, I'm seeing with a lot of the news things is there's obviously there's the publishers who want to really control that experience, and they're trying to have some kind of lock in and, and have it be there. And then of course there's how most of us want to interact with it, which is that it's kind of free roaming and everywhere that we're that we are. And I think that trying to most people have been having a hard time with this. I think the only place that I've really seen it work well still is Flipboard. Yeah. Where it's kind of a, mi a mixture of the two. And even then you get into kind of these weird things where someone's kind of manipulated it so that you see a little bit of it and you go to something that's totally messed up. But for the most part, I think Flipboard is still the kind of the gold standard as far as uh, grabbing that stuff. And Nuzzle, I think, is quite good on iOS. That's it's, it's, it's hardly like news. It still pulls RSS, and a lot of sites won't give you full RSS. Right. So you open it up in news, and they write, right at the top, there's a link to go to the website. And then you're out of the news and in the website already. Yeah. yeah. But that's, and that's fine, too. I just, my, my difficulty, I'm, a, I'm only speaking as a personal user, that um, it seems to be really, the, gra the gravity of this app seems to be almost exclusively towards let us tell you stuff that you, we think that you want to see. Whereas when I, I've, I've done things like, say, I want to find out, I, I want more news that's related to uh, Rene Ritchie, things that he's been writing, and it will give me, oh, I, we know that Rene Ritchie is a technology writer, so we're going to give you a whole bunch of yeah. Apple-based technology sources. No, I'm saying I want to, here's the website. Please add this. No, nope, oh, oh, I'm more, okay, uh, here's Daring Fireball, and here's Recode, and here's, no. Well, it's even worse than that. Like, to do. If, not, if you tell you me about an article... I can't find it. Like if you say, I, like if Leo says Andy wrote this great article and I want to go to use, there is no way for me to find the article that Andy wrote in news. I can find the topics, yeah. I can find publications, but I can't find that article. I, see, I know I know that when they when they first announced this, I did like fill out the form and had anotco.com just registered as here's by all means go out, ha have at you. Uh, and but even I like looking at. I want to see what my stuff looks like in this newsfeed. Again, type in Anatco. Doesn't find my site, but it knows I'm I'm a technology writer. Uh, I'll give it the URL. It will still think I'm just giving it a clue as to what I want, as opposed to a map to the thing that I want. So, it's 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 not. And it's, it just hasn't been such a. And, and even when it does the uh, uh, the Flipboard style, just pick news stories for me. Uh, it hasn't been doing such a significantly better job than Flipboard or even Google News that it makes me want to dive into the features and understand how it works. I don't I don't think that I've tested Apple News from top to bottom, inside and out, and found it lacking. I feel as though I haven't found that thing that got me encouraged to stick at it until I solved the problems that I seem to be having with it. I think it's three countries only right now. I think it's still U.S., U.K., and Australia. And well, it's like, not I, even I Canada? Changed. I changed my region to the U.S. in order to use it, and now I have to deal with miles. I mean, it's just... It's oh, I'm so <laughs> sorry. And and Fahrenheit, discover new health apps and see more on your dashboard. Is this a big yeah. change, health kit? It's part of what you see throughout iOS. Like, they started putting recommended apps uh, on uh, on the lock screen, oh, so I putting see. them inside. Yeah. So this is just a way of recommending apps that you might find interesting because it's hard. Uh, health kit does nothing really by itself. You need apps. Yeah, and all the data. It, it's basically just a, a database for all your health uh, right. information. And it's when you're out of that context, like you leave health and then you go and I want an app. This is trying to put those apps front and center. So when you're thinking about health, it gives you apps that it thinks will go with you. Uh, but the, uh, I think the other change that they don't mention on this uh, page, which is at apple.com slash iOS slash preview, is you can now pair two Apple Watches. That's uh, in the Apple Watch, uh, that, Apple Watch 2.2 beta. Oh, that released from Apple Watches update. Okay. Yes. We've got a new Maps app, a new Maps Glance. Um, ah, okay. And Siri now also supports Malay, uh, Finnish, and Hebrew, uh, which are nice additions. She woke up and she said, okay, I'll support. <laughs> she actually Three more languages. She actually said, okay, I'll do that. That was nice of you. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see, what else is... Uh, TVOS brings back the Bluetooth keyboard. Uh-huh, <laughs> uh-huh. And now there's a big debate about whether we can get sort of PC-style games. And some people are really enthusiastic, and others are saying that it's just not capable yet. But on the watch? No, sorry, with, with keyboards on the Apple TV. Oh, keyboards on the Apple TV. TV OS, that's right. You said that. I don't even, they, they released everything I, yesterday. I have to admit, I just I don't even consider um, using that stupid little keyboard that you have to scroll back and forth on. I mean, I, as soon as I see it, so I just horrible. open it on my phone. I just open up my phone, and I hit remote, and I just type it in. I'm like, oh, I'm not going yeah. <laughs> to... Bluetooth keyboards would be great. I have a, a leftover Apple Wedge Bluetooth yep. wireless keyboard. I will just put it in the living room, and it make me my life so much easier. That will be... And that will all... We think all probably come out in March, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a good Makes guess. Sense. Makes sense.